Hey guys. Sorry, I'm handling tax stuff. Nothing. Nothing at all. I am looking for what's her face, though. I heard what transpired. You cannot imagine my relief when I beheld that safe. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Hey, Monty. Um, this is not my night. <laughs> U Ulrika wants, wants to bang me. So, we're gonna wait around till nighttime. You know, we haven't been to the brothel in a while. Bro brothel stream? Brothel stream? Anybody? So we obviously knew it. Yeah, obviously. She's the only character. So part of Dragon's Dogma 1, and I've heard uh, it's been spoiled for me, uh, kind of, that uh, part of uh, this game as well is that you have a, um, like, your special person, like your... Uh, your soul, your soulmate, or whatever, and um, you have to have one. So I figure I might as well make it, uh, you know, a female, so that um, the blacksmith or whatever doesn't end up being my betrothed or whatever, because it's all about who you match your affinity with. If anything, it's going to be the uh, the elven woman. Thank you, Monty. I'm maxing sorcerer right now. This is very shadow heart. Yes, there is. What did I have to offer? Yet, if your heart air aches for a place to call home, then leave this village. No, not the village. If air, you're in need of a heart to return to, then let it be mine. She didn't take my mask off, so she just kissed me through the ma like on top of the mask. Kaylin says, "Don't waste the twenty k." Yeah, we totally just banged inside of uh, the old man's home. What? Are you saying waste the 20k on a prostitute? Why do that when the queen of prostitutes it seems like she'll just get in for free, you know? Man, any newcomers to this channel? They're going to have mad respect for my game. <laughs> Monty, if you ever see golden trove beetles, consume them immediately. It increases your carry weight. It's extra life. Classic. Enough. I... Oh, hold on. I am above all of you. Carry on. 
Okay, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? So... Okay, this is how much map we've explored now. Pretty much, like, almost the whole thing. I know it doesn't really look at, like it, but... Oh, I guess we need to go up here. Yeah, sure, let's go up there. I have been eating my golden beetles. I can... I can... Fall pretentiously. Really. It's not really flying. It's falling pretentiously. This, uh... This seems like it'll be a reasonable... Did I get it? What? I think that goat might be Satan. So something I learned about that Jake tried to tell me about, but I, I think I was working or something, so I wasn't paying attention, um, is that sorcerers have something called quick spell. In addition to spell hold, spell hold, quick spell makes it to where you can expend extra stamina to cast so fast. I will show you. I'm about to cast a sorcerer spell with quick spell. And it's done. Blizzard. Same spell without quick spell. Yes. I'm not joking. <laughs> now let's do uh, this spell. Quick spell! So I've been playing sorcerer. I haven't, like, been... Yeah, it is. <laughs> I haven't been maining Sorcerer. I've just been trying to, to complete it. And this whole time I've been doing it wrong. So that's cool. Four. I love the Vrigor spell. It's so good. Cycle or ogre. What is my vocation status? Yep, that'll get me there. Just need 757. Thank you, Kitty. And the class mechanic for sorcerer is they charge up their stamina, and that mechanic made no sense to me until I uncovered quick spell. Wait for his first big move. That way he's got nowhere to go. Now, just a bunch of shock, uh, thunder mines. Absolutely magic archer, no question, Monty. Magic archer is, is, is everything. I'm just trying to get core augments from other classes that will bolster my performance is Magic Archer. Oh! Dang! Okay, freaking Rey Mysterio. Does he drop kick? I feel like he, he, he feels like he drop kick. Pull a lot of aggro here, guys. Hey, Kitty, you're a fighter. That's your job. I'm okay. That's really funny. For all of those hits, I had Palladium active from Robin, so he was just bouncing me against the ground with no harm. <laughs> Thief is so good. So I pitched this idea to Jake, because you know there's the Warfarer class. And the way the Warfarer seems to work is that you can have any gear equipped. 
Like you can have any any armor, uh, any weapons, and you ha actually can. So your fourth ability, um, instead of four abilities, you get three because your fourth one is locked to being the weapon swap ability. But you only get to equip three skills, but th those skills can be from any of the classes. So my thought, what I pitched to, to Jake was basically combining a thief and a sorcerer. So you could do invisible casting, essentially, or like no aggro casting where you drop a smoke bomb and then just stand still and just start quick casting like meteor strikes or, or maelstrom, like stuff like that. That did not give me, like, any XP. That's frustrating. Okay, let's go left, I guess. <laughs> I have Dark Simba. I saw him and I knew that he had to be mine. Okay. Keen to make a purchase. Hope to see you again. I have played a lot more of the classes, and I'm probably going to be playing Mage tonight um, just to level it up to max. Because I, I maxed Spearhand, I got Thief and Archer where I want them, Sorcerer's about to be maxed, and then I just need to do Mage. And then I just stick with Magic Archer, I never look back. See, that's what I don't know, Monty. I assume that it would switch to that weapon when you use that ability or something. Um, or at least I hope so. I hope it would be that rather than you have to... Oh, here comes the griffin. I hope it'd be that rather than, like, you have to equip the weapon first, then be able to use the ability. But I think the value in doing Smoke Bomb for that is that Smoke Bomb persists for a time and it's not character bound. So I don't think there'd be any... Like, I think it'd be a loophole because if you cloaked, for example, I could see the game being like, well, when you switch weapons, you're not cloaked anymore. Because it's attached to the character. But with Smoke Bomb, it's an environment effect, so it should linger even when your character state changes. If that makes sense. Uh, another combo I thought of was Mystic Spear Hand abilities, comboed with the Greatsword. Um, so you can just do, like, that amazing magic barrier ability, or you can do the, the teleporting... Just all that crazy stuff, but a great sword be the weapon that you're attacking with. Also, pro tip about Frigor. Um, when you cast it and it shatters... That um, block of ice that stays for a few seconds, uh, it went away immediately, but it normally it'll stay for a few seconds. That's tangible. So you can use it to climb. It's not the most effective, but it's something. I literally need 129. So basically, basically one more fight. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, okay, that came to me anyway. What the f- where'd you come from? I hate harpies. So see, I'm using it as a platform to stand on.
Okay, that'll do it. Max rank sorcerer. Now let's go back. And it's funny because normally warfare is where you potentially have the most interesting opportunities for build crafting. Um, so galvanize, see my stamina is low. I just hold down galvanize and I rapidly increase my stamina. Um, but I think while I'm galvanizing, I take more damage. So it's basically the way the sorcerer is able to quick spell constantly um, and not have to sit around and wait for stamina to come back. Which, um, combining mystic, spear hand, and sorcerer with warfare isn't a bad idea because one thing I've noticed about spear hand is that its greatest weakness is its stamina pool. It runs out of stamina very fast. But it also has an ability where you like grab somebody by the head and just drain the life out of them and it converts to stamina. So it's got safeguards in place. Is this the town that doesn't have a vocation guild? I'm going to be really pissed if this is that town. I think this is that town. But everybody moved here from that other town. Vocation guild? You are useless. You are worthless to me. You are a waste of life and you should give up. So a Michael Scott quote. It's becoming one of my favorites. Do stop by again. No. Open a vocation guild, then we'll talk. Sucks. Guess we're going back to the old vermin. Where's the the thing? Where's the thing? Fancy a look at my wares. Ugh. Always a pleasure. Uh, no, they don't. It's only smaller villages uh, the, does the Vocation Guild um, share a spot with the... Um... There's no ox cart here, is there? Should I do it? Should I break a cardinal sin? Or commit a cardinal sin? Yeah, why not? I'm using a fairy stone. I, I just... I just don't... I don't want to walk that path again. We've made it then. What's our first order of business, Arisen? Find me another fairy stone. Actually, I'm not even messing around. I refuse to go. If I don't have a fairy stone in my inventory, I I refuse to do anything else until I have replaced it. Also, Jake had the nerve to send me a fake fairy stone as a gift. I think he may have tried to kill me. Like, that was his way of being like, oh, Steven's going to equip this. Like, it was a very long-term play, mind you. But still, it was malicious as hell. He, he, he was sending me that being like, oh, eventually Steven's going to work down to just that fairy stone. He's going to have it in his inventory, and he's going to be stuck. He's going to try to use it, and it's going to go, and nothing's going to happen. Incredible move. If the old coot that makes forgeries didn't misspell everything. I saw it and was immediately like, that's weird. I thought I was, I guess I've been misspelling it this whole time. And then I read it and it was like, oh, no, it's just a rock.
uh, instead of F E R R Y stone, it's F E R R I stone. So keep an eye out for that. I'm not going to do any of the damage or the healing stuff because that's what Robin's for. So I'm going to do that one, I guess. Well, look at that. Mages have quick spell as well. I'm an idiot. I'm just stupid. Oh, wait. No, I want Frigger equipped. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, Gonna be honest, I couldn't figure it out. I think the concept is, is very cool. I have no idea how to use it, and it felt like it was in the wrong game. I guess I'll equip that. I guess I'll equip those. Then we'll go back to our black hood look. That's a solid look for us. Also, Monty, whenever you uh, fight a Drake, you will get an item called like a... Well, I'll show you. Of course, I forgot to grab a staff. Shut up. Um, sure, I'll put that for now. So you're going to see crystals that look like this. Worm's Life Crystal. Keep every single one of them. You're going to meet a Ancient Arisen at one point in the game. And he accepts those as currency, and you can get a port stone from him. You can get the God's Bane arrow or something like that, which um, literally... Hold on, let me find it. I know you're in here somewhere. It may be in my inventory. Oh, no. The unmaking arrow. The ultimate arrow, said to kill instantly. Note, once fired, the game will automatically save, so choose your moment with due care. You literally have an insta-kill bullet in your pocket with the unmaking arrow. Um, but it's, it's obviously a one-time use. You get that from that Arisen. Um, I'm saving it um, for potential like story. I'm assuming there's something in the game that can only be killed by the unmaking arrow. Um, what else? Oh, um, you also can upgrade. So you can Dragon Force stuff with the, with the, uh, that guy. So save all of those crystals. Of course I can't equip the Friars. Why would I be able to equip Friars Hood as a mage? So stupid. You know what? I've had worse looks. This shoulder cape, this red shoulder cape, has been putting in work. <laughs> the trouble calm, but rest assured, our... Doors shall remain open and our base. Yeah, that's a good plan, Monty.
Well, okay, Dark Simba. Holding out on me. He was trying to hoard all the freaking beetles. I can't believe this. Let's see if I can get a better staff. Hello, good man. Better staff, perhaps? The unfettered claw. Ooh, I like that. I actually like that a lot. One, please. Did. And then we'll upgrade it. Nice. Do come again. Now tell me what to do. Welcome to and quality is what you need. I don't care. Uh such a sad looking hood like, it feels like a hood only a dis disheveled person would wear I have no other ways to explain <laughs> oh yeah to survive. many thanks I appreciate it I am so tired of having to go back and forth between these two guys. Okay, we'll go ahead and rest. Robin's back. He traveled with Vance. Who gave him no review? That's unacceptable. You made me the porn I Is there a smudge on his face? What's going on? Come. We've much to be getting on with. Um. Well? Does he have dragon's plague? Okay, Robin. Let's go to the crest crystal. I have not bought myself a house yet, Monty. Probably should. Attentive and loyal, and prefer to remain by your side. So, we are to scour for the grimoires on Miss Trisha's list. It is. But, um. Dark Simba, I don't know if I can trust you anymore. There are so, like, so many people are using that. <laughs> Literally three in a row. Four in a row. I hate the player base of this game. So eager to chat with me. Get out of here. You know what? Take a rotten cranberry with you. Tell Jake Steven sent you. With a thumbs up. Well, you didn't deserve your heart. Me? Jake has sent me a counterfeit uh, fairy stone and a rotten boiled egg. Those are the gifts he sent me. Monty, come on. You mean to tell me that you don't think that at least a significant number of the people playing this game did that on purpose? Come on. Come on. Come on, Monty. So those pawns only go up to level 30, so I want a thief, methinks. I'd never get rid of you, Dark Simba. 
Playing one of the best thief armors is super skimpy. It's not their fault. You'll find none lighter on their feet than a thief. I'm sure my. Uh, sure, sure. Bye, Dark Simba. You tried to steal from me. Because of that, I'm sending you home with. A fake fairy stone. <laughs> oh, man. Did, you, did I get rid of it? Damn. Damn. I'm sending you home with a fish. And no rating. And there's a woman just in her underwear back there. Let us work together to honor the arisen. I'm worried about Robin. He's got a scar on his face now. So, I... I think I might have to do something that I don't want to do. Apparently, there is an illness we pawns can catch beyond the rift that makes us a danger to ourselves and others. Yep. Symptoms include an unruly attitude and overconfidence. And in the end, we turn our backs on our master and our duty. I'm sorry, Robin. How terrible. We shall have to be alert for signs of the sickness among our number. Right way ahead of you. Okay, the Brian got him. And now we resummon him. I'm not gonna use the unmaking arrow on Robin. I could use it on Kitty. I like to think there's going to be somebody so dedicated to this game that they're going to figure out some way. They're going to have like a save backup on like an external hard drive. And they're going to find out the effect of killing literally every NPC with the unmaking arrow. That's a whole channel. It's a whole channel right there. Robin. There he is. Is the scar still there? It is. Why? I'm sure you can, but it won't work. Because that's the thing about counterfeits. They're, they are in name alone, the, the, a replica. I think he somehow got a permanent scar. I'm going to buy one of those. And then I'm going to buy What do you think? Round frames? Yeah, I'm thinking round frames. Look way smarter now. Oh my god, that's a freaking Drake! As you wish, I shall return directly. I will protect you. I think Drake's where he dies. I've been wondering that this whole time. Since we fought our first one. Ow. I think I was correct. Oh my gosh. Guys, get out of here.
terrified that this Drake is going to cast Meteorite and just knock out so many people. Oh, here we go. Oh, I stunned him. Nope, I failed. <laughs> Find out about the uh, tome. No, 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 no. Please fail, please fail. Okay, good, okay. Bye, thief. Oh, he, he lived. Uh, yeah, unless Fuse wakes down on the Monty. means if a, if a quest giver dies, so does the quest. Alright, he fled. We look way smarter with the glasses. This is good luck. Oh man, he spilt all the apples. I'm gonna give this to Robin. Um, oh, apparently it, it, it's only usable at a Barbary for some reason. <laughs> Good use of power, Monty. Good use of your power. That was the responsible thing to do. Oh, okay. Alright, so that spells garbage. Nope, that's just the sun that I created out of your window. Welcome, should you so desire. I can help you find your truest self. His scar is not there for me. What is happening? Is it a story thing? That's gonna that's gonna bug me. That's that, that is so gonna bug me. Robin, come here. I just I'm worried that it's like it means that. It, this is something, you know, that he like got dragon's plague or something like that. The guild, sir. I should be glad to it. Fire seems to be the most useful of the boons, so we will equip that. Yeah, it is. I'm just worried about it. Sure. Much appreciated. Oh, is that okay? Cool. All right, so let's go explore what of the map we have not explored. So that would be Malachite Forest, whatever that is. Let's be off. Treat your ears. Yeah, and it appears you can also, I was thinking about it more, the, the, I really hate that this game's legacy, at least for right now, is the microtransactions thing, when, again, it sucks that I went the wrong way, <laughs> it, it sucks that that's a thing, but if you're going to pretend or if, if you're going to be up in arms about that 
and and be like, no, I'm boycotting any single player game with microtransactions. Uh, Devil May Cry Five had the same kind of microtransactions, and a lot of people would have considered that a game of the year, like game of the year material. That game is universally praised. Everybody loves Devil May Cry Five. I love Devil May Cry Five. I didn't even know the microtransactions were in there, but I did some research. And I'm pretty sure I heard that Resident Evil 4, you know, the game of the year contender, the one that actually was a game of the year contender, also has similar kind of microtransactions. So it's like, this this didn't start here. Don't act like this game is the one to blame. This one, out of all of them, and I'm not making the argument that, micro, that microtransactions in a single-player game are good, but this one, out of all of those, makes the most sense to have them because there's social elements. And it's frustrating that just because people were already pissy about frame rate, because people are little bitches when it comes to their computers not running everything uh, at 10 million PSI bullshit, whatever. I know, I'm just making up words. But... <laughs> um, they they looked for other things to be mad at, and they were like, "Oh, micro transactions that I don't have to purchase. How how dare they?" Again, it sucks that that's a thing, just in general. But Dragon's Dogma, much like Devil May Cry Five, much like arguably Resident Evil Four, phenomenal games from a studio that, amidst all these layoffs that have been happening in the industry. Capcom has been incentivizing game developers to work for them. They've been giving them raises. They increased starting salaries there by 20%. Um, they frequently release games that are like this, where it's a single-player experience that doesn't have egregious monetization. They basically were one of the most successful to this day um, games of service uh, life cycles and that's Monster Hunter World um, which also again had microtransactions that no one needed to purchase does it suck that microtransactions uh, exist in these kinds of experiences yes it does but to Say Dragon's Dogma 2 is a bad game. To review Bomb Dragon's Dogma 2 because of that is to miss the point entirely. Because this is a game that was clearly a passion project by one of their greatest creators they have on staff there. And to boycott the entire game because of that thing that you don't like and not because you just gen like genuinely don't like the game is being harmful to the, the you're doing more harm towards the potential existence of more risky games like this because this game was a risk um, if you really want to protest against the microtransactions just don't buy them if you don't want the game don't get the game but don't boycott the game or review bomb it because of that thing if anything the one thing, the, the one thing that you can do, where you speak with your wallet, um, buy the game, don't touch micro microtransactions, because that is the most effective way you can say, um, I really like this, could not care less about the micro like like I I w will not be one of the one of the people buying these microtransactions, they're pointless, because if you don't buy the game, then you're just saying more than anything. I don't want single player games. That's not sending them the message, oh, people don't want microtransactions. It's it's because this game is greater than the microtransactions that were put in it um, just for the, the stupid whales, the, the, the few whales out there that are dumb enough to buy a lot of those. Um, sure, speak out about it. But whenever you're critical, and again, this is all with the context of if you think you'll like the game and you've played the game and you do like it, but the microtransactions thing is just too much for you, speak out about that. 
but don't rob the game of the laurels that it deserves. Because it genuinely is a great game that I want more. Like, I want more games like this in the industry. I've been saying that since Dragon Dragon's Dogma 1. Um, and this definitely feels like more of the same. And it, it, it hopefully is going to be a jumping off point for more games like this from Capcom. It, it, it doesn't have to be, and this is just something that so many people right now, the, my generation and the, and the every generation after that, they're a bunch of morons. They don't know how to separate, they don't know how to separate the whole of something from the context around it. Like, oh, I, it's fun, like the whole thing going on with like Nickelodeon right now and Dan Schneider, I'm not a Dan Schneider sympathizer, I think he's a, I think he's a scumbag and I'm glad he's he got fired and he did horrible things but like I watched a video about it just kind of summarizing his career and people have an issue with like whenever they think about the Nickelodeon sitcoms or whatever it's just like I can't support this anymore because I know what Dan Schneider did and it's like it's just saying that is again kind of missing the point because the shows were more than just one man who was a, a really bad person. A lot of people worked on that. Um, a lot of careers were launched out of that. It is okay to disagree with something and not boycott it entirely. In fact, being that person that walks the line makes you a more informed person on the issues that you have. Because this wouldn't be such an overblown thing if more people that had that problem had played the game and realized that the microtransactions are barely even there. They are so pushed to the side that, again, most people who play it probably, and, and weren't in on the controversy, probably didn't even know they were there. So, it, it, of course, there, there there is a limit. Like, if, if it's something you feel so strongly about and you, like you feel more strongly about the microtransaction issue than you care about the existence of the game, then don't buy it. That's fine. But it's always better to be informed than to just jump on the bandwagon, you know? Always. Um, that's why it, I, I, I'm guilty of... of not so much jumping on bandwagons, but having my mind set. Because sometimes, like, Hideo Kojima is a great, it comes to mind. I have such an issue with him as a creator because of the context around him and just the general vibe of his entire existence within the space that I have a hard time separating that from any of his art. Um, and I know that, but at least in conversations, I don't try to like pretend that I'm right and my and that, like you know the whole my truth thing is the truth. Um, I I make sure to include that context that this is why I have a hard time th um, thinking of Death Stranding as as more than the four out of ten that people made it to be when it first launched. Um, I try to in include my own context, like the context of my surrounding relationship with the issues um, in the same conversation that I'm having about the issues. People are also lying about the microtransactions to people that haven't played the game, saying some of it can only be bought, which isn't true for any of them. You're absolutely correct. Because these people don't know. They, they aren't... They either don't know or they, or they don't care and they are, are so hell-bent on being mad at something that they'll just straight up lie so that their anger feels more justified. And that, and that's the issue here. The, the enemy isn't even microtransactions in this situation. The, the enemy is misinformation and just, um, bandwagoning. Because I guarantee you if, if the, the narrative you know, for the if for the first time in the history of ever, 
the narrative was able to be actually focused and everybody stopped talking for a second and realized, hey, the game is great, but there's this thing that we don't like. If, if even like half of the people that are bitching about this as much as they are, if even half of them came together and made that clear, Capcom might actually realize, oh, this is a problem. Let's not do that again. Yeah. I I hate stupid people. I I cannot stand so much of the of, of my generation and, and the generations after it because they feel like they need something. Like so many of them feel like, well, what am I going to be mad at today so that I can feel like I'm part of something? There's there are very severe existential issues happening with with young people, starting with millennials going down. Where I feel like so many of us failed to figure out what we wanted to do with our lives, failed to figure out. What, what we find fulfillment in and feel like we were given a raw deal compared to the generations before us. And, and so because of social media and because of how much we clung to that at formative ages, our dopamine comes from feeling like we're not alone. And what better way to do that than to... Because anger is a powerful emotion. Anger isn't always a bad emotion, but it's always a powerful one. And so... It feels good to be anger... Or to, to, to be angry alongside someone. You know? That's, that's why so many people gossip. That's why so many people um, love drama. Um, because, because in a weird way, it feels good to just be up in arms alongside somebody else. Um, and that's, that's kind of why everyone sucks right now. It's one of the many, many reasons. It's why mental health is at an all-time low and will continue to, to decline because issues are not getting addressed. And things that used to be issues are now, and yes, we're, we're, we're getting deep, but you know, it was, it was bound to happen. <laughs> um, but for the sake of like political correctness and progressive thinking, genuine mental health issues that need to be addressed and, and, and helped are being put aside because it's not, it's a lot easier to just say, well, this, this is how I am and I can't change. And I'm, I'm not just talking about ones. It, it's a lot of things. Like uh, Casually explained, just a funny YouTuber that um, just does rants to like really crappy MS Paint drawings said something about how, um, I think it was him, but he said we collect uh, mental illnesses like Pokemon badges. It's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of true. People like to think there's something wrong with, like... They, they like to be defined by what they struggle with, but they don't like to be told there's something wrong. They just like to be told that you're just fine just the way you are. And so mental health get, goes, for the most part, oh gosh, these guys are elves and I don't speak elvish. You can, count on me to fly to your aid in your hour of need, can you speak elvish? Do you speak elvish though? That's what I need. Oh dang, this dude's stacked. But, and I'm not trying to get political, that's not what I'm doing here. I'm just saying that I, I think broad strokes. Glen, Glenduir? No, I haven't been to any of the elf stuff yet. The first and only elf I've met is the, uh, oh, nope, is the Magic Archer Lady. But I'm, I'm just saying broad strokes, and obviously things like situations are different, but um, 
broad strokes, that's a lot of the reason why so many people are so unhappy. Because they refuse to look at what are actually issues, and they just consider them quirks about themselves, and, and they refuse to change. Well, that's my opinion anyway. I need a rift stone so I can talk to elves. Monty, do you know how to set pawn specializations? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I, I, I can't help but be, be what I am. I am blank. It's like, well, you, you can. I mean, some things you have to live with. Some things are nurture rather than nature. But there's always something we can do about the way we treat ourselves and the way we... Hold on. Are you the same guy? I'll carefully conserve yeah. my strength. I don't care. But there's always something we can do. Um, and so, and I'm not saying everybody needs to be quote unquote fixed, but even in, in situations where it is like a, a, a thing of well, that's just how I am. That perspective, um, it's a defeatist. Uh, um, attitude, right? Where it's just rather than learning mentalities on how to improve yourself or how to acknowledge how others perceive things they may not understand, it's just I'm going to lean on this as my uh, my my reason for not having to work on myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have chronic depression. I, I, I go to not good places a lot. Like I'm never a flight risk or anything like that, but it's, it's hard to exist sometimes. And I, and I believe in the power of therapy. I've been to therapy multiple times. Um, and I think it's a very good thing. Um, but the whole thing about I don't know. I just no one no one has it truly figured out. We're all we're all fundamentally broken in some way and we need to constantly work on ourselves and we're losing that. And it's true that, like, there's... The stigma of mental health has changed. Where'd the thief go? We just lost our thief. But the stigma has changed to where, like, mental health is being acknowledged as... as a serious... need. Do you speak to elves? But the issue is not so much that, like, it's all about, like, the, the stigma has changed. I'm, I'm thinking as I go, obviously. I've, I, I absolutely believe in horse and dog therapy. 100%. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm saying, like, dogs are... I haven't spent a lot of time around horses, but, but horses are truly amazing as well. But dogs are so incredible in, in what they're able to do for the human soul. <laughs> but um, mental health it, right, right now, I feel like, is less of... making steps to improve oneself and more of 
uh, trying to acknowledge one's own limits. And just, you know? Like, it's not preventative, it's just... It's more focused on just acceptance. And to a level, to a level acceptance with that kind of stuff, I think, is important. But, again, everyone can work on things. And rather than just being like... Oh, well, give, give time for yourself. Know when you need a mental health day, all that kind of stuff. Just things like that, which are important. We can always go further. Like, why, like, why do... like? So someone that struggles um, with, like trust issues. Why do I struggle with trust issues? Let's get, get to the root of that. Let's try to get to a place where we can trust again, rather than just accepting that a person being an asshole all the time is just who they are. It's not... You're not supposed to be an asshole all the time. <laughs> like... That's not good for you, it's not good for your relationships. So, like, why pretend like that's an okay state of being? Does that make sense? I'm kind of just shooting off the cuff right now because I am in a foreign-speaking country currently <laughs> where there are elves and I don't speak elvish and my thief may have run off with my coin purse. Yeah, if I'm off base, just tell me. Good job, kitty. I'm about to golf club this dude's head off with a giant block of ice. Am I a Sasquatch believer? No. I don't think so. I think cryptids are interesting. Um... But I think there's so much sen 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 sensationalization that feels like an overcomplication of what I'm trying to say, but there's so much of that surrounding certain cryptids that it's like... It's very clearly, clearly in some ways, it's business. It's just a fun, like... It's, it's 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 fun fairy tales. It's cultural mythos. It's it's American mythology. Um, Chance to have a, a quest from Glindweir. Um, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think I do. Server still up? What, what server? What server, Kelly? Crypt is really cool, but I don't know how anyone can believe in them. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just. We have so much. For cryptids, where there's like no evidence except for a picture from like 1967. Like, that's hard to believe in, because even though I, I am a person of faith, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, My 
it's it makes a lot more sense to have faith in non-corporeal things. It's easier for me to have faith in 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 in, in God, a higher power, obviously because I, I see God work in, in everyday things. But also, Sasquatch isn't Sasquatch is a corporeal being of this world and we are led to believe that he is just kind of a big hairy monkey thing a to go un like undiscovered unproven for this long with so many people looking for you no that just doesn't make any sense half of them are just I saw some glowing eyes and a thing above me, like, damn, ever heard of animals? <laughs> but it's like, you know, how does one, how does one find God? That's, that's a hard question. How does one find Sasquatch? Well, probably, probably look in a lot of woods to find Sasquatch. Where there have been, you know, reported sightings. Maybe look there. Oh, people have looked there a lot? Nothing? Gotcha. It's basically the story of the original Mothman. Mothman's apparently, like, one of the greats, though. Again, I watch a lot of Wendigoon, and he, he loves cryptids. He doesn't believe in any of them, I don't think. And if... I don't know what, what he believes in with that, but, like... He, he's doing a cryptid uh, tier list right now. That's multiple, been multiple parts. And a lot of them, he's just like, yeah, this is stupid. He's gotten so fed up with the number of Loch Ness Monster uh, ripoffs that he's just started throwing them all in F tier. And I get it. <laughs> so, Kaylin, I'm really bummed about that whole because I had a plan with, with the Prometheus Corporation Discord server. Um, and it was going to involve... Collaboration and interaction from people, because um, I figured that was a good way to cover my weaknesses. Um, my weakness being that, and I had this conversation with Anna, um, like I think yesterday, that it's hard for me right now trying to figure out what does my, what does my life look like, what does my purpose look like, when I'm not a self-starter, I'm not that kind of person that can just be motivated by the sheer will of, of my own desire to make something of myself. I'm more motivated by letting people down. And so the plan with Prometheus originally was get some uh, fellow, uh, like get some friends that are also creative types and give them a creative space um, so that it's a shared project while there is a larger narrative going. And that's why there are the different wings and the different heads of research and all that stuff but it never caught on with them and it never caught on with with other people and I blame myself entirely for the bad first impression that happened when I first launched it um, and so it just kind of blew up in my face and I got really demoralized and the server's still up but it's going to come down at some point when I decide to if I want to keep going or not, because the story is still there. The story is still one that I've iterated on multiple times, and it's it's a large scope thing, and so it's a matter of like, where's the natural point to begin? Um, what's the, the what's the medium to use? It's all of those things, but but filtering that through the lens of I need to do this for me during a time when I'm just tired. Life is a lot in general. Um, and, you know, I have, I have a kid. He's great. I love him. So he's a lot to keep up with. Uh, Anna works a lot, so trying to make sure we have time together when she's home obviously is a priority. Um, I'm, like, one of my greatest joys is streaming for you guys. 
just getting to hang out and feel like I have friends. Um, that sounded pathetic. Feel like I still have a lot of friends. Um, that doesn't look good over there. Um, and so piling, being creative in a, in a way that I feel confident in, because that's always been my, my struggle is that I doubt my own work. Um, and I, I would have to commit to a format and stick with it and keep going. And I look too much to the approval of people reading it and being like, oh, I totally understand what's going on. I enjoy this, blah, 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 whatever. Um, that it's such a slow burn. Oh, thank you, Robin. That I don't know if I can... And, I, and maybe if I, if I stuck with it and I got some of the story written down, that it would, it would come easier. Because then it would be like, I don't need affirmation from readers to see that I've made progress. Because this is a story I've been workshopping. Like, I've, I've been expanding on it, developing the world and the characters and everything for 12 years. I wrote the first part of it on an airplane ride home from a mission trip I went on to New York City my senior year of high school, 2012. It's in July. Um, I know I do, but it's just... I don't do well alone. Oh, wait. Pause on the rift. Do any of you speak... I almost said human. Do any of you speak human? <laughs> um, okay, I guess I'm just going to have to talk to all of them. Starting with you. I'm attentive and loyal and prefer to remain Literally, their, their name is, their name is battle, you. That's I pretty funny. Uh, vocation. Wait, no, that's the, the pawn details. Of course. But yeah, the story, um, it's hard to explain. This person's, person's proportions are uncomfortable. Like, doesn't her head seem like way too small for her incredibly large torso? I, I hope you don't speak to elves. I, I don't. Okay, no specialization. Good. We're, we're done here. This interview is over. I have a modest talent for spotting materials. So you don't speak to elves. F fantastic. Amy? A well organized pack is my specialty. No. You are in good health, I trust. I, I know you. I pray my efforts aid your cause. No specialization. I would love to learn how to give to my pawns specialization, a specialization, or my pawn a specialization. <sighs> okay. Does nobody here speak to elves? I see you recognize my worth arisen. That's a... <sighs> I was watching... Stop talking. My talents lie in combining material. Nope. I happen to understand elvish, master. <sighs> I expect, I expect you'll find my talents useful should we encounter another species. Are, Are you fit, fit to travel? Did her boobs just disappear? <laughs> okay, we're going to keep looking because that's going to be the third mage. Looky there. Excellent. Um... But basically where I landed with kind of the crux of the story is because it's something I always struggled with was I'm not going to read you. I'm just going to give you rotten meat and then send you along your way. But the, the thing I struggled with with like motivating myself to keep writing was what's the point? Because you, cause originally it was because I enjoy telling stories. I enjoy uh, creating worlds and characters and, and all that stuff that comes with it. But, at, you know, when I became an adult and wasn't just kind of doing it as a side thing for a hobby and all of my time suddenly needed to be justifiable in, in the, the way it was spent, I struggled with the thought of what's the point? And it pretty much ended up being... Large scope, and this is all I'm going to say. 
I, maybe. It became a metaphor for the creative process. Like my, my creative process. In a really cool meta-contextual way. I was really proud of where I landed with the world build. Um, and how wide it was. And how many characters there were. And, and um, in a lot of ways, if I, if I tried to describe it right now, um, it would probably sound like absolute like garbage because at the end of the day it is a it's a genre blend and it's a lot of things that I, and I that I love but in a broad view it's justifiable to be that um, but um, I'll think on the best way to describe it without one sounding pretentious which says the guy that just said it's a meta a meta look at the creative process good job steven um i'll think on it Where are the elves? I got this fancy new pawn that can speak to elves. Uh, this is the most rickety ass rickety bridge. You are not a pawn. He's gonna break this bridge. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> um, trying to think of like to define if I was defined as a genre what would it be that's you know it's a jump scared last night by skeletons on a very that's the best gotta love that but it's it would be a series with a lot of action a lot of um, characters and dark at times not so dark at other times so I'm describing a story basically yeah my story is a story. Does that help? <laughs> but the... Um, I did take some inspiration in, in the... Kind of where Prometheus landed with the Discord server four years ago. Has it been, did I start it in 2020? Oh god, I did. That's horrible. Um, but I took a lot of inspiration from SCP and Control, but not in the plot. It was very much so just the idea of a large corporate entity and the... Did I just pick a fight with innocent people? I'm so sorry. Can I see your wares? I hear you've got a, a wares of all ilk. That's good. I think your friend's dead. Please let me purchase from you. I, am honored to be to you I didn't mean it. I got a wake stone. But um, basically, the, the 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 overall style I was going for, like the execution style, was um, a Discord server that exists within the reality of the story that. Hey, Fairy Stone, I'll buy that. Um, and the audience, it, it was very light ARG elements, but mostly on fiction to where it was kind of towing a line between like, it was obviously never going to pretend to be real. Everybody, everybody knew better. But it, it was an interactive fiction was was the, that, that first part of it. Um, what? <laughs> I didn't do that. Oh my gosh. Um, but the plot would have been that you have this large, um, think Umbrella Corporation kind of, where it's a large comp company that has um, influence and power in the medical space. But there's obviously more going on underneath. But whereas Umbrella was just straight up evil, um, that's not where this, where Prometheus was coming from. 
it was much more of a um, good intentions, trying to understand anomalies within their world um, out of a place of fear for the human race. That's why it was called the Prometheus Corporation. Prometheus granted fire to the humans um, so they could... Um, the, the thought process there was the Prometheus Corporation looking at human advancement to even the playing field with things of things beyond humanity that exist in, in this world. Um, and the, the, the big project that um, like the, 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 the crux of the story of that act of the story uh, centered around Prometheus and Prometheus is just it's just the starting pistol for everything. Um, that entire thing would not have, like the story wouldn't have lived on that server. It, it couldn't because context would have changed. Um, and so the, 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 um, the crux of the story was uh, Project Orpheus, is that what I called it? Which is basically um, it's ultimately child soldiers but augmented children through natural or other means. Um, that's where it was headed. And I don't think that's any spoiler because like where the little bit that I did write and post very much implied that. Um, and I, 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 it's not one of those things where I feel like, oh, where's it going to go? You've got these kids inside of this facility. They don't know anything beyond the facility. Of course it's going to go towards that kind of direction. Um, but like I said, kind of like how I'm just going to use examples of, that I have talked about a lot to so cuz I feel like I'm confident in the in the way I talk about them much like the division it's not about the green poison um the division is not bound really in any c crucial way to the mechanics of the dollar flu or any kind of large outbreak that was the starting pistol to create the fall of society. And the division is very much about that. Uh, what happens when society falls and there are only a few left to piece it back together. That's, that's the general. So the, the whole thing with the Orpheus children, that was kind of the story's green poison. I don't know if anyone here even played Division or knows what I'm talking about, but I've talked about it enough to where you should all know. There will be a test later. <clears throat> and something I was excited about was b because the, the narrative was going to be a lot less traditional where the story happens through what oh, not, Maximum not Ride book count. series might be good reading for you. It has augmented children. I'll, I'll look into that. And like, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with, with that whole thing. Like, I, I don't think I'd, and I don't like, I don't want, I feel weird about reading to look for inspiration because I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm just ripping people off, you know, but I do. Oh, hey. Absolutely nothing of use except for a fairy stone. Thank you. I will continue to stock up on these. But the, the, the cool thing about the story that I was really excited about that I never got to, I never got far enough to show my hand. But because the narrative was going to happen through the lens of someone writing case reports, basically like this is what the children did. This, these were the conversations they had. It was going to be very like matter of fact. Um, not in, not through a writing style or perspective of a specific um, voice. Like it was going to feel very detached. But part of that was going to be militant dove. Um, hell yeah, I'm going to want that. 
Oh man, I'm going to want so many of these things. Damn it. <laughs> I need to go make some money. Uh, but part of that was going to be that because the, there was kind of that thin wall, fourth wall between the audience and the characters, the, the audience being kind of playing the role of investors within the, the company. So yeah. they know some of what's going on and what's fed to them. That's proprietary information. Um, the, the, um, there were going to be uh, times where um, the individual characters would get interviewed uh, for, or, or like tested, um, like run through psychological evals, stuff like that. And I was playing with ideas for how to let the audience be a part of that. Like maybe pick the questions that, that those characters are asked or something like that. So that it, there's not player interaction that requires like role playing, but, but I say player interaction, like, like it's an RPG. Um, or not an ARG, an RPG, we're playing RPG. Uh, to where you could just send a message to the admin account and be like, um, ask, ask, ask subject seven what this word means to them or something like that. J just if, things that give the audience the opportunity to, to look deeper into characters through specific lenses that they may be thinking. Um, I mean, I don't think necessarily, Caitlin. It just depends on... One, the importance to the story and, and to how it's handled. Uh, baby in peril can mean a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, Harry Potter technically starts with the baby in peril scene. I've never read the books. I just know the movies. But Harry's almost killed by Voldemort and then, you know, when he was a child. So, And that's a, book, a kid's book series. <laughs> I'm just going to stock up on materials and I'm going to sell a crap ton of it so that I can just buy so many of those things. But yeah, I'm probably rambling, so I will get off of that. But in summation, it may come back, Kaylin, but I think I need to be in a better place in how I perceive myself before I can bring it back. Because I finally know why. Like the why, like what's the point? I, 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 I came to terms with that last year and got to, got to a point where I, I felt really good about like this, this, this seems like it's not just creation for the sake of creation, um, which should be okay. But for some reason it's not for me, to me, uh, for me personally. Um, because I guess I always feel like I have something to prove. Maybe it's to myself. Maybe it, it, I don't know. But, but yeah, I would very much. So, some days I would very much like to to do it again, to to dive back in, and and other days it's just like, who are you kidding? You can barely. Keep a job, you know. So I guess I just feel like I need to get my house in order before. Like if if I get to a point where job security isn't an issue and, and, and we're closer now than we were a month ago. I feel good about my editing job. I'm going in tomorrow. Um, but it feels wasteful to me to spend time and energy towards that is being kidnapped by a henchman who is trying to escape through a forest fire. I think that's fine. Because, especially if it's... Especially if... And I don't know the story, I don't know the characters or anything, but if the baby is a character for later on, and that's pertinent to their story, or if the loss of that child or something to do with that child is important to the other... It's all, it's all about why is this being shown? Um, and it's in some ways in storytelling, the hard moments need to be shown because how can, I mean, 
There's a character. You know what? Sure. I'm just, I'm just going to go and say this because it, it's literally the first time we meet this character. Uh, back when I was writing shorts for the story um, that I was posting on Facebook, just that's back in like 2012 through 2015, just because when I was doing it for fun before I really fleshed out the story as a whole, um, everyone's favorite character um, is named Gabriel. That's Peter's middle name. Um, partly because of this character, but um, I don't know what I was going through when I when I created him. But everyone liked him a lot because he was a very troubled vigilante type. But his origin so bleak, <laughs> and his story literally begins with. And again, this is the first like if by some miracle. I end up writing all of this and it, it goes somewhere. This won't really be a spoiler. Um, his story begins. Uh, he's part of a family of four. He's the older son, um, a very happy traditional family. And one day at breakfast when he's like eight, nine years old, um, his dad goes to answer the door. Um, and gets blasted away by a shotgun. And then a group of men come in, kill his mom in front of him, and um, kidnap his sister. And the only reason he's not taken is because he, without knowing it, has the ability to alter the perception of people's vision. So he can cast illusions, essentially. Um, and he was basically in a panic um, like I'm not here if they don't see me I'm not, like, basically speaking that into reality um, and there was a reason that all of that happened that those people did that and that but that is like the kickoff to his story that's his that's his motivation he is a very troubled character he does very bad <laughs> he basically becomes a boogeyman for bad people like he um, a Batman type that thinks that killing is the solution. Um, doesn't believe in second chances, all that stuff. Um, haunted by his past. So someone like that, for them to get to that point of, wow, this is a dark person. It's necessary. I don't know if I can say necessary, but it's very relevant to portray where that darkness comes from. I don't take any pleasure. Like it's it's not edginess for edginess' sake. Um, he was a part of a very happy family that was ripped away from him. He is tormented by the fact that he doesn't know if his sister is alive or dead, and he defines his life from that point forward for a while in finding her, and that progresses into him becoming what he becomes. It's all building blocks. It just happens to start in a really sudden awful place what am i doing here <laughs> i think i was trying to sell things yeah i'm trying to sell things can i sell a pawn's equipment and just send them back with nothing and i could be completely wrong you guys could be like wow steven that's really messed up that's not okay okay <laughs> i <laughs> that i've been wrong this whole time and i apologize But he was a fun character to write. The, the, very, um, graceful too. I need to just, yeah, I think I need to just switch to Magic Archer and see what these armors look like. Cause I'm absolutely going to go off of looks. I could give Robin an arcane hat, but I don't think we're going to do that. So that does ice damage. An unthawing ice, ice enchantment. That's cool. Militant dove. I mean, I pretty much have to use that one, right? Okay. Is there a vocation guild here in Elf Town? Also, it's strange to me that there are just elves here. Um, maybe at the end, like 
it, it, I really like the aesthetic. It's very Rivendell, and Rivendell are, is the, the best portrayal of elves. Um, fight me. Rivendell and Lothorian. Really any Lord of the Rings elf. <laughs> um, but, like, I've, I'm at the end of the game, and I, I knew there were elves because I watched trailers for the game, but, like, I had not seen any elves except for the one that taught me, taught me how to be a magic archer. So this is a bit jarring, but it's interesting. All right. No pants. Let's go. You've chosen the path of the magic archer, then. A sensible choice. That's who I am, Robin. Is that in reference to my lack of pants? Can't really tell. Sorry, Jake texted me. Chat, you still there? It got really quiet. Am I still connected? Okay. I appear to be. Okay, so I'm not going to get the... I almost called it the belligerent dove. It's the militant dove. It's a solid looking hood. It doesn't really look that different from the friar hood, though. I like that. I like that archer vest. That looks really good. I don't know if I like that one. Maybe I should put on pants. I should probably put on pants. <laughs> Over the knee boots. Nightfall Greaves. I'm going to go put on pants. <laughs> yeah, good, good idea. Good idea, Monty. The words of uh, Will from Fort with Will. Gonna need a new pair of pants. Gonna need a new pair of pants. <laughs> Augmented people in my books are called Evo and have the condition erochromia, which is two different colored eyes. One eye color is from the father and other color from the... Interesting. Is there any kind of... Uh, is this kind of a My Hero Academia kind of situation where um, the inheritance from the, other, from the corresponding parent is also like what their augmentation... Like do they inherit in the form of augmentation um, or anything like that? Gotcha. Yeah, that's. I, I, I figured that might be where you're headed. Uh, superpowers are uh, like uh, th that's basically where the, the, my whole story started. Was just the fascination of like the MCU and and just wanting to do my own take on that kind of stuff. And so that's very heavily featured, like Gabriel having the ability to create illusions. Um, is I've always thought that like illusion like the power to create illusions is very interesting like mesmer from guild wars 2 basically created that whole concept for me um archer's vest that's a that's just a clean look guys that's just a clean look it makes that makes me look fat it makes me look fat guys i don't i think i like the archer tunic or in the archer vest, whatever. What do we think? What do we think? That's cool, Kaylin. I like that. How does Robin look with a hat? I don't think I like it. It looks exactly what you think it looks like. So an issue that I've had with a lot of magic archer armor is the sleeves. The burgundy coat, I have that currently. 
and it's got these long sleeves that look kind of cool when walking, but it just seems like too much. I think Archer's Vest is a good call. It's just a simple, clean look. And then compare pants. Cool. Pants I have are, are good. So now I just need to sell everything I have. <laughs> God, I'm not mage. I almost jumped to not my death, but my inconvenience. Um. Most of my customers are elves, but it's okay. That's good. Don't be racist. I'll come back for that. And, okay, fine. Change you back into a mage. What even do I want? You know what? Let's just let's just go to Magic Archer. Let's just turn back to Magic Archer. I'm I'm already Magic Archer. What am I doing? Let's stay Magic Archer. Um, need augments your magic. I mean, as long as it doesn't come up to your waist. If it does, then you're dead. You're just dead. Organized storage. Withdraw. So let's withdraw nine of these. And then ten. No, twenty of the nineteen of these. Um three. 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 Gotta be increments of five or even numbers. Everybody knows that. Pawns die. Like, they get yeeted back to the rift if they die in the water. Sure, I'll sell that. I'll sell that too. I'll sell you. I'll sell you. And you. You. Some pants. Some more pants. Because I want the bow. And I can't really afford it yet. I want to buy that bow and then be okay after. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so slow, I'm heavy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Let's keep it going. Um, sell, sell. Okay, they're still marked good. Sell, 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 sell. Sell, sell. Keep the Wraith Greaves. Sell. Alright, what are we up to now? Hell yeah, we can buy that bow and have... Maybe buy Robin the staff. Give Robin a weapon for a change. Ring of Articulacy. Is that 10,000? No, go back. Okay, so buy that for Robin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
buy that from me. It is live action, Kalen. Militant Dove. Hell yeah. what sure okay yep fancy bow nice need to change up the gear a little bit but yep yep and then yep and Yep. Okay. Yeah, it heals you when you stand still too, Monty. That's that's legit. So, we're going to change our clothes. Hopefully this is the last time I have to make this walk. We're gonna try a few different looks here. Let's see what we like best. We're definitely using the uh, archer vest though. A1 sauce is good. Not the hat. <laughs> All right. How do we feel about this look? Do we like the, the hood? Do we want to go shoulder cape? Because I'm thinking either we go mask and circlet. So here are two options. Here are two options. Okay, here are two options. This. Okay. Uh, and I kind of like how the shoulder cape covers up the, the shoulder guard that was kind of... Yeah. Or this... Those are the two options. I might give my character a haircut. The The buzz cut's not really working for me. What do we think? Worcestershire is good with, with steak. Like, to cook it in. Yeah, it's not a condiment, but it's it's good to cook steak with.
Monty's voting for Hood and Shoulder. Cape. I'm gonna run Hood and Shoulder Cape for now. But I think I'm also going to when I get back to uh, Vernmouth or whatever. Benworth, Benworth, <laughs> that's what it's called. When I get back to Benworth, I'm going to look at. Um, different haircuts I think deposit that deposit staff cool unfortunately you can't that was a huge bummer this is a very clean look why are we here like I don't even remember if we came here to look for something or not uh which one, Kalen? Say it five times fast. I'm not going to attempt that because I'll fail. <laughs> very, very handily. No, I can't do it. Fell Lord's Bone. Okay. Okay, good. I can work with that. Oof, that was that was a hit. That was an expensive hit. I need to stop. Okay, now that I am damn near broke, let's go do something. Flynn's trying to get comfortable on the couch. Okay, we're all here. Uh, how high up was it, Kaylin? Yeah, I did. The, the the eyes, that part. All right, let's go to the west. Oh, I broke my shoulder cape. Okay, there we go. We're good. Very well. I shall return. Cape again. <laughs> eh, get off. Get it off. Excellent. Gosh, that is a super cool bow. Let's scout ahead. So that's going to be a dead end with a chest. Was that necessary? Probably not. But with all the saurians and slimes and everything that you find in caves, I regret nothing. The avalanche and with the avalanche. Oh, here we go. Hey, it's so over. Jeez, it's so good.
Post-apocalypse utopia, facade held together by Black Ops faction. Gotcha, yeah. Good setting. I like that. It's a deer. It's a deer. Pull back. That's why we use the, uh, that's why we use the scouting arrow. Come here. Flynn didn't like when I picked up that deer. Yo, it's a it's a big boy. Respect. Please don't get in the way of my many lock ons. What class is your main pawn, Monty? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. What manner of traps have been set to ensnare us, I wonder? Nought can threaten us if we watch each other's backs. So this would be going just in a circle, right? Yeah. So let's reassess. Part of me wishes that pawns could be warfarers because being able to make Robin a sorcerer, like someone that's got sorcerer tier spells, but um, can do anodyne and other support spells would be so good. Seems relatively safe. There was a token thing up there. Did I, like, where up there? Move! Like this way? Wait. Oh, uh, last plot. Gotcha. Then I shall remain by your side. I realize that I do need the secret tokens because one of the rewards for like 150, which I'm never going to get to, 
Um, yep, I see it. Um, is a staff that, uh, when being it has a, an arisen's heart attached to it, whenever a, a, a pawn, that pawn goes down, they can revive themselves. I think. Wait, I thought I saw it. Oh no, it was the next one over. I see. Good eye, Monty. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's I'm gonna need that. So that way is open now. More stuff to sell. So we need to go. Setting originated from the idea to have a plausible way for magic to exist IRL, so this setting was the best way to do it. I love um, settings with modern like modern settings that where magic exists. I think that can be such a cool concept. And that's something that I ended up incorporating. You know, I, I made a a hard magic system that I was pretty proud of. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not because I don't know. I, I may have pivoted away from that a little bit, but. I, I love when stories do that. Yeah, I've only found ten Monty, and I've and I've eleven. <laughs> I'm relatively thorough when I like it, with the places that I do go to explore. Okay, so. Another underrated uh, setting, I think. Well, maybe not underrated, but one that I feel like doesn't use a lot is is like Magitech, like Final Fantasy Seven, Guild Wars Two, uh, Cantha, stuff like that. Just combination of futuristic and fantasy, where things are powered by magic. Super cool. The Jade City or, or Kynang City, New Kynang, in Guild Wars Two, is awesome. Hit the guy further away. I'll just flame fang him. <laughs> Did I get all three? Oh, hell yeah. What a shot. I didn't know that was a book. Okay, okay. Might need to look into that one too. Chimera. Pro tip, Monty, if, in case you haven't fought a Chimera yet. The lion is where your physical attacks come from. They are weak to fire. The goat is where magic comes from. I believe they're weak to physical. And then the snake is just a bitch that does poison. You can chop them in half pretty easily. At least that's how it was in the first game. I don't see why they'd change. They're really not bad. 
dare I say they were even more fun to fight in the first game. Pinpoint volley is so slow. I have a hard time not using rivet shot. Keep an ear out whenever you're just wandering around because minotaurs can appear and they'll often just make their presence known by shoulder charging into the person that isn't paying attention. Minotaurs were not in the first game. I was very surprised when my first Minotaur showed up because it showed up by ramming me in the back. Yeah, we're outside. That's a beetle. Character thinks he has telekinesis, but he's actually being haunted, helped by a ghost that has a secret life debt with him. Eventually, he reveals himself to the character, quite literally. That's that's so fun. I like that. That'd just be so awkward. <laughs> like, so is that connected to that character's in inherited abilities, or is do he, is he just haunted? <laughs> There's this episode of South Park that that reminded me of where Cartman thinks that he's dead and a ghost because everyone decided, because they, they were so fed up with him, they all just decided that they were going to act like he doesn't exist. And Butters wasn't there uh, for that arrangement. So Butters um, shows up uh, to Cartman being like, Butters, I'm dead. I'm a ghost. How, how do I move on to the spirit realm? And so the whole episode is Butters trying to help Cartman make amends for his past. And there's a scene where these criminals t uh, are in, in the ha house somewhere. I don't know if it was in the kid's house, but they're like holding hostages. And Cartman's like, this is it. This is why I've been held into this, in this plane of existence to, to, to help the police with this very moment. And he walks in and he, keep in mind, he's, he's fully alive, but everyone's just been messing with him. And he walks in, he thinks he's invisible. And he's just going, Ooh, just shaking things in the house. And the criminals are just kind of looking like at each other. And they just go, this is weird. <laughs> and Cartman doesn't realize it. Oh, man. that's That might be my top ten favorite episodes. Just haunted. Evo are in power in the far future. So he thinks he's royalty. Hey, 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 chill, chill, chill. Hey, okay. Just want to get blasted. That's that's how you get blasted. I shan't let them harm you.
Oh shoot. Really? Oh what? There's a goblin there? Crazy. I had no way of seeing it. The quick fire is worthless. I think in the tutorial they even tell you, yeah, this is kind of worthless. Don't use this unless it's an absolute last resort. Yeah, Beetle! That's a that's a good elevator pitch. Okay, got another version of that bow. Thank you, Robin. to bring where is it arctic bolt just to try this out and see how I like it I haven't used the skill yet Yeah, rotten meat. What? So I think they actually use rotten meat. Like, doesn't it look kind of brown? Like, that doesn't look like a healthy steak. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Monty. I'm probably about to end the stream anyway. Uh, if you're still here, Monty, hang out for, like, another 30 seconds. Because I want you to see what the, the, the arrow I'm about to use does. I haven't used it, but... And so. Just need to find. Just need to find one guy. Just one poor SOB. Perfect. It literally just launches a giant ice cube. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. It 
It's just it just gets bigger. And it's just <laughs> Alright. Let's arc that Saurian. Oh my gosh, this range is abysmal. Come on. What what a shot. That This is this is my new toy. Just gonna keep slapping people in the face with my giant ice cube. Oh my gosh. Fall. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm an absolute menace. That is so funny. I have to end the stream there. <laughs> he fell so fast. Did you guys see that? Um, I'm not sure what we're doing tomorrow. I I will be streaming. It'll probably end up being Rise of the Ronin if no one's available, but I will definitely be streaming because Anna's house parenting again this weekend. <laughs> Did the funniest thing to Asarian today. Three and explosive barrels landed behind it, but still watch it. Super high. <laughs> the uh, Mystic uh, Spear Hand has the, has the ability to... I, I, there's no other word for it. To yeet smaller enemies in, into space, basically. It literally says, like, send small enemies to the heavens. Knock down bigger enemies. But I'm headed out. I will catch you guys tomorrow night. If you're thinking about what you want me to do to stream, hopefully I'll have a group, though, for something like Helldivers. So, bye, guys.